Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening on Wednesday, the 26th of July, 2023, to Vision Store's third Exploring Technology webinar for the year, where we'll be discussing different ways of accessing the printed words in our life lives. My name is Tony Wu, and I'm joined by my fellow co-host and AT guru, David Woodbridge. I'd like to begin the session by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet this evening. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. The webinar will be recorded for those who cannot stay for the duration uh, for the entire session, and you can access the recording later by visiting our Vision Australia YouTube channel. This is an interactive session, so please submit any questions that you may have uh, for myself or David throughout the session by using the chat box. For those that use a screen reader, you can access the chat box um, by keystrokes alt H or shift plus command plus H if you're a Mac user. And for those that have any issues with um, accessing the chat box, uh, we've dedicated some time at the end of the webinar where I can um, unmute you. So you just have to click on the raise your hand button um, and I'll unmute your microphone so you can ask the question and we'll answer as many questions as best we can and as many um, as time permits. Welcome, David. Good evening. Um, me first? <laughs> you first. That's right. I was, I, was, I was waiting in anticipation, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I will, um, I guess, discuss some of the magnification solutions that Vision Store offers. And... Uh, I will relate it to examples of how you would use the device. So as an example, I have the, the Clover 6 uh, with me, which is a six inch handheld, uh, handheld electronic magnifier. And this one we would use um, where if we're on the go, basically. So if we're out shopping and we want to look at price tag information, the handle does um fold out so you can use it as a handheld so you can look at price tag information uh, or nutrition information on food packaging but if you're at a cafe for example um, you can also fold out the stand so the stand <clears throat> um, you can use it as like a stand magnifier so you can uh, move it across the menu and read the menu that way um, being handheld and portable you can take it um, anywhere on the go and it is very simple to use. It has a couple of buttons on its uh, right hand side, the plus and minus to increase and decrease magnification. And you can also adjust the contrast to allow you to read the text more easily. Uh, what's great about electronic magnifiers is that you can adjust the magnification to suit um, your level of sight um, that you have. Tony, can you actually freeze the, the, the picture? Because I'm just wondering if you you know, if you're at the, you know, at a, a shop and you wanted to, you know, take some, have read more information about a particular item, can you almost take like a photo with that one and I'll freeze the screen and then read it at your leisure? Definitely, definitely you can. There is mm. a, a freeze capture button, uh, which happens to be the orange button on the right hand side, just above mm. the, the plus, and you can take a snapshot and save it into its gallery and view it as your leisure. So for example, if you're looking at something um, in the supermarket on the top shelf, mm. and you can just take a snapshot of it, and then you can actually um, look at what it is that you're looking at, whether it's um, a product or the price tag information. Mm. But um, yeah, that, that's mm. one type of um, electronic magnifier that one can use. Mm -hmm. But just out of curiosity, Tony, how far away from an object can you use it? I mean. We're talking about 30 centimetres, 60 centimetres. How, how far away or close do you have to be to the item? What's great about the Clover 6 is it has two cameras, one camera ah. for distance and one camera mm -hmm. for near. So when you flip out the handle, it mm. goes into distance mode. Um, but if you make it into, fold it into a stand, then it goes into near mode. So oh, cool. um, that's really um, great about the Clover 6 is that it has its uh, dual camera. Mm. Excellent. I, 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 I almost wish I had live vision because I could have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next um, one. 
Next one. So if you <laughs> happen to do a lot of reading, but you want a larger screen size, that's when <sighs> the Ex Humanware's Explore 12 will come into play um, because it has a nice large 12 inch screen and it has a stand that folds out so you can just place it on top of the reading material and um, depending on how large you magnify the actual text you can get a couple of columns of newspaper uh, as an example but if you pop the actual unit in its um, optional stand then you can basically I'll just lift it up um, and I'll just unblur my um, background so you can see a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> if you have it in its stand, then you can actually do um, writing tasks or crossword puzzles, mm. um, or you can um, read a book underneath as, as well. So um, for those that do, I guess, um, more reading and that don't want to have a little handheld mag and forever scan the page, mm. um, something with, with a nice large screen would come in handy. So Tony, with that one, when you said you can do handwriting underneath it, yes. do you get like a weird sort of effect where you can see, I don't know, like a weird image of the actual pen as you, or the pencil as you're writing, or does it sort of um, compensate for the fact you're moving the pencil plus your, your actual print that you're writing? Uh, definitely. So the, the camera is autofocused, so you mm. can lock the focus of the camera. So as you're writing across the uh, of the page, the mm. camera won't focus in and out, in and out uh, all the time. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Um, but uh, very simple to use. Uh, at the bottom of the unit, there are three buttons. Um, there's the one button with the plus on it, which is increased magnification. Um, the minus uh, button decrease magnification and the one in the center is um, changing the contrast and like the Clover 6 you can also screen capture or capture an image mm. and um, enlarge it and view it at your leisure um, later as well. Okay. Is the Explore 12 battery operated or is it only mains powered? Uh, it's battery operated. Oh, okay. Rechargeable battery operated so yeah right. not mains powered. Okay so how much um, how long does the battery like if you were using it to I don't know, my favourite book, Harry Potter, for example. <laughs> I mean, could you get, like, you know, are we talking, I don't know, eight or ten hours of use out of the thing if we really wanted to go that far? From memory, um, mm. it's a few hours of continuous use. Um, okay. So, but if you do run out of power, you can also mm. plug it in and you still use it while it's charging as well. Right. And, and, and I'm assuming not that you'd probably want to use a handheld magnifier to read a long, long book. But the Clover 6, is that battery as well as mains powered or is it, is it mainly running off uh, battery most of the time? It's running off a rechargeable battery. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So could you could you, could you you actually have it plugged in while you're using it? Definitely. Definitely you can have it still plugged in while you're using it. Okay. Um, that, that applies to both uh, devices with Explore 12 as well as the um, Clover 6. Okay. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure about the Clover 6, but I'm assuming with the Explore 12, that's pure video magnification. We're, we're not talking about, you know, text-to-speech or anything. It's pure video magnification off the page. So it's just basically large print. That is correct. Yeah. That is okay. correct. So the Clover 6 and the Explore 12 is just pure magnification. Mm -hmm. There is no um, uh, text speech functionality in these two devices. Okay, can you use them in low light situations? Because I'm, I'm off. I mean, because I'm. Do they have their own light source? Because I'm assuming if you're in, particularly if the Clover Six, like if you're stuck your head in the pantry, and you think, you know, where's the where's the jar of jam, for example? Yeah. Does it does it self illuminate so that it can actually magnify what the camera is actually looking at? Uh, definitely. So they they both have built in LED lights. So um, you Great. can use it in um, low light um, environments or conditions as well. All right. Excellent. Very good. Um, the 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 next <clears throat> um, product that I wanted to show was the Connect Twelve, um, which I have left at the vision store so i might go quickly <laughs> grab it later uh whilst you're doing your little spiel on your product that's okay cool <laughs> but the what's great about the uh 
Connect 12 um, is that it's an intelligent um, digital magnifier. Mm -hmm. So it not only can you use it as um, a, a, a normal electronic magnifier to magnify what you want to be able to see, but mm -hmm. you can also have the text-to-speech uh, functionality. So provided that the document um, mm. is printed text. You could it will take a scan of that document and it will read aloud the actual text to you. So if you experience mm. um, eye strain or visual fatigue, you can um, still continue to read, but just listen to the document as opposed to reading yourself. So you mm. can sort of rest your eyes. Um, but I'm also assuming, Tony, that from a it's it's still a low vision product. So a lot, for me as a blind person, I couldn't use the interface to then use the text to speech as a you know a bit of a standalone reading machine. It's still primarily a low vision device, whereas the text to speech is just a bit of an added in feature. That's correct. So it's the core function will always be the magnification feature, and mm. the the secondary function is the the text to speech. Um, but yep. the Connect 12 is based on an Android tablet, so you can also use it as um, as an Android tablet, and you can download apps um, if you have a Google account, mm -hmm. and um, use it as a, as a regular tablet. And you can you know, do e emails, um, surf the web, um, play games. Um, you just have to turn on the accessibility accessibility features, um, yep. so you're able to utilize the Android side of it uh, a little bit more easily does it come with its own stand uh yes it does yes it does um okay. so it does come with its own stand so you can also do um writing tasks underneath um mm. and the stand gives you the perfect height to do the um capturing right. for the text-to-speech functionality mm. um and it also does come with an optional distance camera as well so i was about look... to ask you that one very well done <laughs> so so if you do need to um look at things in the distance so mm. uh, for example you're in a school setting or a, a work meeting for example mm. uh, you can use the the distance camera to zoom in and out of what you want to look at. Um, and you can also capture printed text and mm. have it read out aloud to you as well. Yeah. So when you say in the distance, and I'm assuming this goes for the Explore 12 and I guess the Clover, how far is in the distance? I mean, are we talking five metres, 10 metres? How uh, far are you roughly? Roughly like within a classroom setting. So oh, okay. I yeah. see what you mean. Yep. 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 Um, Going beyond that will be a little bit hard. Um, it will get a yeah. little bit pixelated once you sort of zoom zoomed in that, that out. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing how far the cameras actually go. Because I know when I was playing with one of my um, one of my smartphone cameras, when I was having a video chat with somebody, they could actually see the, my back fence from the back of my house, and that was like a good 10, 15 meters away. And I thought, wow, it's amazing how far cameras can actually see these days and beyond. But like you said, the further it gets away, the, the more it gets pixelated and starts being a bit more fuzzy and so on. But yeah, that's really good. Definitely. Um, I guess the last magnification device that I wanted to share is um, a wearable. So uh, I guess a, a wearable like um, the Vision Buddy is mm. that you wear on your head. Um, so that means you have... <laughs> And your hands free so you can uh, as an example if you're playing uh, a musical instrument and you need your hands to um, not hold on to your clover six uh, as an example um, that's when the something like the vision buddy will come in handy and it will allow you to i guess read your music as you're playing your instrument whether it's the guitar piano violin mm. um, etc um, but um or you might be able to do um, do writing tasks as well. Mm. So anything hands free, basically. But um, this is a, a good alternative um, if yeah. you need your hands. Is it fairly heavy? Like, is the headset fairly heavy on your head? Or not, um, not too bad. It's not too bad. I guess these headsets has been designed for gaming, so so they yeah. should be comfortable. Fairly comfy, yeah. Um, you just have to adjust the straps to suit your your head yeah. size. Um, and once you've set that, um, then it shouldn't feel um, that heavy. Mm. It's one of the one of the lighter um, uh, VR headsets on the market at the moment. Okay. Now, one assuming if you're looking through effectively a video virtual camera type thing 
can you walk around? Like I'm just thinking people might be thinking, oh, great, I could probably use this in a warehouse to look at stock on shelves higher up that I couldn't normally see. Is that sort of unadvisable though? Because I'm assuming you're not you're not really in real time, are you? No, no, that's a great question. And it's highly recommended that you don't walk around with it because mm. it does block off your peripheral vision, so your side vision. So there right. is the danger of you sort of bumping into things and tripping over things. And right. plus, um, walking around in a VR headsets, you'll get motion sickness as well. So <laughs> right, it's, it's, not, it's not a nice <laughs> feeling at all. Um, but I guess if you do need to walk around, you would um, sort of take it off your head, walk yep. to where you need to go and just pop it back mm. on. So one should be stationary when, when using it. And mm. um, I do get asked this question sometimes. No, you cannot drive using it either. Um, no, I, I, I was about waiting question. for the warning. Please <laughs> do not operate machinery or drive whilst using yeah. this product. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah. Uh, those are the various um, magnification solutions uh, yep. for the various um, cool. reading tasks or tasks that you need to utilize it for. Yeah. Does the Vision Buddy do optical code recognition text to speech, or is it purely magnification again? Um, it does um, have the text to speech capability as a secondary feature. Oh, okay. um, I didn't realize that. And the the core function of the mm. Vision Buddy is to enable you to watch TV. So yep. it does come with um, uh, a transmitter box to allow mm. you to transmit um, the the TV or the streaming service straight into yep. your VR headset. Mm. Um, but one needs access to uh, Wi-Fi to go to do that. So um, yeah, because it's streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Very good. Cool. All right, well, look, while you go and grab the um, the Connect 12 from the Vision Store, no um, I'll, I'll talk about some of my things. Sure. Um, all right, so I'm going to talk about uh, three main things, and then I've got something else to talk about at the end, which I'm, I'm going to make you uh, wait for now on the webinar. It's like the old Apple thing, you know, and there's one more thing. So just going on from what Tony was talking about with the Vision Buddy, I want to quickly talk about something called the OrCam, which is O-R-C-A-M. And yes, it's a wearable. It's a really, really tiny camera. Um, and I like to say it's about the size of a cigarette lighter. <laughs> so if you remember what cigarette lighters felt like, um, that's the size of it. It's about, if I was going to measure it, it's probably the length of my pinky finger. Um, and it sits on the side of any glasses because what you do, you get a little, uh, a little magnetic attachment that attaches via effectively some uh, cable ties to the side of your glasses. It pops on the side. And then when you start it up, it's basically a text-to-speech system. So and I know we've been using text-to-speech today, but I guess the real term for it is optical character recognition or OCR. So it's taking the printed word that's in print, then converting it through you know going from an image stroke photo to text that then it gets read out so that's why it's called text to speech um and you can basically point at things to to read so if you were looking at a sign in a shop um or you were looking at some information on a product um or if you're looking at a bus sign you point and the camera basically effectively focuses on where you're pointing and takes a picture and then starts it reading to you and it's pretty much almost instantaneous it doesn't really doesn't muck around starting the text to speech and it's purely wi-fi or cellular independent so this thing has got its all its functionality built into the unit itself so you don't have to worry about not being on the internet uh, not having cellular access it will actually be you know going on its own right and you can voice can voice command it with your own voice to get commands you can also touch the side of it um, to you know tap and move through the actual menus make it take a picture manually um, and the 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 one that i've got does all that plus it also does things like barcode reading face identification currency identification um, so it really does do a heck of a lot now the newer one uh, which I sadly don't have because they, I bought mine just before the new ones came out. It's got this function called smart text. So what it tries to do is when it looks at um, like a newspaper 
or an article with maybe different headings on it, it tries to zero in and give you more of an indication of what you want to be, what you may be wanting to looking for on this particular document, like a, a cost of something or a particular heading and so on. So it, it's a very clever use of, dare I say it, artificial intelligence or AI that tries to, you know, give you faster, in, faster access to the information you're after. Now, because it's a camera, um, the one that the one that I tend to use, and maybe it's changed, and Tony can always check this with me later on. I'll let me know. But okay, um, it doesn't go too well in light in low light situations. So I found because if I try in the pantry, I've normally take my item out of the pantry and just go and stand under the light or near the window, and that's fine. Um, but besides that, you know, when I'm out and about. Um, it's perfect for, you know, reading the quick menu at the uh, the coffee shop and, and that sort of stuff. It does have its own little built-in speaker, but you can also, and this is how I use it, you can actually Bluetooth it to your, you know, your Aftershocks or the Shocks headphones or any other Bluetooth heads, and, and it actually works really nicely. Um, total tech, total time for using, you're looking at about two, or two hours roughly, um, but that's a lot of time. How much it is now? Um, up to two hours. Up to two hours, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So up to two hours. And I, and I find with mine, I mean, that's a long time to to use something that's technically a wearable. Um, if I'm going to do any serious text-to-speech or OCR usage, then I'll go and use something uh, that's more built for doing that. Now, I find with things like, I guess, like the Vision Buddy and the Allcam, it's really the sort of the instantaneous stuff that you need access to. And that's normally when you're out and about or... You know, you've just gone to the mailbox or somebody's just dropped the mail off and you, and you want to check it quickly. That's what these sort of wearables are, are more for, is that fast, quick access. Or in an office, somebody comes in and says, like, you know, here's the new handout for the, the new media presentation. You think, oh, God, how am I going to read this? So you pop on your, your glasses with your all cam, um, tap it okay. or point. And I'm and wearing mine at the moment, David. <laughs> Oh, very good. Nice. Very good. Um, so it really is a nice device. I actually have mine on a lanyard because um, I'm a bit paranoid because this thing's actually sitting on your glasses connected via magnet. And I get a bit paranoid. So I've always got my mine on a lanyard. So if it pops off the side of glasses, which, you know, you've really got to push it to push it off. Um, but yeah, it does work extremely well. Have I missed any main points, Tony? Or do you hear me talking about the smart feature? Did I get that right? Yes, so it's it's a a mode that you have to activate um, mm. for it to um, be in that uh, sort of smart mode. As, as you mentioned, it does look for um, specific information on the document um, for you or or the um, article. Um, mm. So you get the um, information that you require instantaneously. Cool. And, and what about the low light situations? Was that was that, that was, okay? Because yeah, I, that was correct. That was oh, correct. Good. I got it. Yeah. Okay, because good. Yeah, good. Because I, I don't normally walk around with a light meter going. Oh, look, it's only ten percent. <laughs> so, yes. All right. Cool. All right. So the second thing I want to talk about is um, this little device, which is actually the um, Sense Player uh, OCR ET, and yes, OCR means Optical Character Recognition or Text to Speech, and the camera is actually on the back. Um, so what you can do with this one, and this is pure text-to-speech only. This is not a magnifier because its, it's primary function is as a daisy player, plus all sorts of other goodies as well. Um, but it's really easy to use. You simply go through the menu, you literally choose OCR, um, and you go down to the function that starts off the process. It makes a lovely little click, 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 and, a, and you know, the old camera click sound. And then it starts reading to you pretty much straight away. Um, and it, I must say, it does work extremely nicely. So normally, if I'm listening to you know a book or ABC radio via the, the internet radio service, I've already got this in my pocket. Um, so if, if my son from uh, school comes home and you know waves a pamphlet at me from a handout from school, I can just take it out of my pocket and then do you know a quick picture of it and starts reading it to me. Of course, I can wear I can use three point five mil headphones or Bluetooth headphones and I can just start reading it. And again, like 
you know, again, like the text to speech on the Vision Buddy, um, the OrCam, it really has to be printed text. I know there's some things that actually do read or trying to read handwritten, but as far as I understand it, it sort of works and sort of doesn't. Um, so this is a Sense Player OCR. Now, again, remember, its main function is a Daisy Player, but because it's based on Android, um, Hims is going to be keeping adding lots and lots of other functions in the future. So watch this space for the for the Sense Player OCR ET. Um, and don't ask what the ET stands for. I reckon it stands for entertainment, but you know who knows. <laughs> Um, all right, so the next one is the Blind Shell Classic 2. Now, there's a couple of things that I love about this phone. Don't be put off by the name because I know it says Blind Shell Classic 2. I wish they would have given it another name because it's also for, also for low vision people and you can turn the voice off. So you can effectively use it as a good old, you know, almost like the old-fashioned Nokia phone. So you've got the screen at the top, non-touch screen, um, and then you've got your your number pad and real real keys and on the back here you've got a nice little top middle you've got a nice little camera but what i like about it from a low vision point of view is you've got this fantastic little flashlight that if you um this one's a this thing's menu driven so you go up and down the menus with the up and down arrow and then you press the you know the green okay button to select it and for a blind person, I know when the flashlight's on because it goes to let you know it's on. Because if I activate the, my flashlight on my Apple Watch or my iPhone, it drives my family nuts. Whereas if I do it on this one, and then I know I've activated it because it actually makes a sound for me to, to know it's on. But it means that if you've got some low vision and you don't need magnification, um, you just need a bit of illumination, you can use the flashlight. Or the extra two things you can do with it, you can use the magnification app. So you simply go into um, the applications menu, into visual aids, and then choose magnifier. Or like I've done with mine, there's a, a button on the side here, which is my favorites button. And I've just selected all the favorite apps that I want to use all the time. So all you have to do is press favorites press the up and down arrow and go to the one I want. So the magnification one sounds like it suggests it is. It uses the camera here to magnify. So you simply point the camera at what you want to magnify and it comes up on this little screen. Um, keeping in mind, it's only a, I think it's a 2.5 inch screen, so it's not huge, but it's like using a sort of like a, I guess like almost like a visualette or, or some other sort of handheld optical magnifier or digital magnifier. It's got a little a light source in it. So that's number one. Number two, it's also using, because again, um, behind the Blind Shell Classic 2 menu, you've got Android. And for the text-to-speech component, so the OCR, it's actually using Google Lookout. So you go to uh, Visual Aids again, you choose Google Lookout, and then it's got a few different options. It's got Explore Mode, which basically tells you what's objects around you. It's got food, otherwise called barcodes. I don't want to just call it food. Um, and then you've got the text OCR and it's instant text. So you literally just down arrow to with a text, stop. It then uh, will all then automatically activate the camera and look for any text in your environment. So again, if you're in the pantry um, and you can't see and you can't see stuff on the packaging, it will actually do that. If it's low light it will automatically turn on the flashlight function to try and eliminate what the camera is trying to do the, the image off to then do the optical character recognition process. So I, I guess in some ways it's like having a, a simple smartphone which, which is all menu driven. So like I said, you've got the, the flashlight, you've got the magnifier, and then you've got the, the text-to-speech function plus all the other type of functions that you would ex expect in a smartphone. Um, and I normally get about around about a day and a half, but I have not honestly read um, a whole document with OCR. I mean, I can put this in a stand that we'll talk about it in, in a minute um, and do it that way. But, you know, literally it's, it's again one of those things that you think, right, I just want to quickly be able to read something very quickly. I've got my Blind Shell Classic phone with me. I just pop it out of my pocket. In my case, go to my favorites, choose Google Lookout, 
and then off I go and I can start reading really, really nice and straightforward to use. And again, simply it's all to do with up and down arrows to select an item, press the green button to, to say okay. And I'm, I'm assuming this button on the right-hand side is red from memory. Um, you press that to go backwards. So simply that's it as far as the complication of the whole system is, is concerned. So very straightforward to use. The speech is easy to understand. You can change the font size on the screen. So really, it's a really great customized phone for both blind and, and, and low vision folks. So they're the three main products I want to I wanted to talk about. Tony, did you want to just finish talk about a little bit the Connect Twelve, and then we'll do my one more thing? Sure. So uh, I will just unblur my background. So the Connect Twelve comes in a comes with a case. Ah, uh, sorry, stand, and <clears throat> you can place your reading material underneath. Um, the stand gives you the perfect height to do the OCR um, feature. So you just position the document underneath, um, press the capture button, and it will scan the entire A4 size page and start to read out if there's any printed text. Um, also on the stand as well uh, is the distance camera that I had mentioned that you can sort of look at things in the distance, but you don't have to use the actual um connect 12 tablet in the stand you can take it out and um, you can also use it as a, a regular um tablet uh, android tablet as well um, but that's the connect 12 in a nutshell yeah it, it's a really nice one how sturdy is it um training because i'm just thinking for i don't know primary or secondary kids is it certainly fairly robust to very wait the backpack very and... very very robust and it folds down quite nicely as well mm. So, okay, done like that. Um, but yeah, falls down quite flat. Um, and you can pop it in. It's um, it, it comes with a carry bag as well. Okay, so it's pretty yeah, it's protected as well. Yes. Cool. Well, yeah, very good. All right. Now, um, so the two, the two, one. So the the, the last one more thing, as in good old <laughs> Apple days. Um, I'm gonna. I want to talk about two. Um two different types of phone and tablet stands because I know we haven't talked about smartphones or tablets in this webinar because I just think sometimes those things can be done to death and that's why Tony and I decided to mainly focus on the you know the blindness and low vision products but yes you can get lots of different apps for doing text-to-speech you can get lots of different apps for doing magnification and particularly on the iPhone, if you go to appleviz.com, and that's the word Apple, and then V-I-S to vision.com, you can look in there and there's lots of apps for both, like I said, for, for low vision access, magnification, and text-to-speech. And of course, the classic one for uh, text-to-speech on the iPhone is the Seeing AI app. And um, both the Magnifier app on um, iOS, so iPhone or iPad and on Android as well, um, works particularly well. And of course, you can do all the usual things you can do with a video magnifier. You can change the contrast, you can zoom it up, but it certainly doesn't have all the, I guess, the extra functionality that a dedicated video magnifier has, like the, the Clover 6, Explore 12, um, Connect 12, and, and so on. So to me, the, the, the iPhone and the Android ones and the tablets, they, they do a really good job. But if you need that little bit of extra tweaking for a low vision person, then that's why the, the dedicated video magnifiers come in handy. But anyway, getting back to tablet stands. So this one you have got here is folded up and this is the, the Belkin stage stand. So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up and hopefully, so basically as I'm like, let me just get my microphone out of the way. Um, <laughs> I'm going to find out where my phone's gone. There's my phone. Um, so as it opens up, you can put out the little stand. So you could actually sit your tablet or your phone on the little on the little stand here, as it's you know as it's sort of um, at an angle. A little flap. <laughs> yeah, a little flap. Yeah, I was trying to wait the right name for it. Yeah, a little flap <laughs> pops out. <laughs> And now you can watch Netflix and YouTube and, you know, all sorts of the lovely things that you want to watch. 
But the other thing you can do, which is very cool, is if I, I'm going to put it all the way up. Okay, so pretend I'm going to put it that way so you can see where the hole is. <laughs> um, so what happens is if it's like that, remember this is going to be horizontal really on my desk. But this nice big hole here allows you to put a tablet um, on top of the whole unit. So let me just go and grab my iPad mini. Okay, so here's my iPad mini. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tablet on there. So now, if I had my cover off and I was using my iPad, the camera fits in that slot perfectly. So if I tip it up that way, that's where the camera is. So when I put it down on top of the tablet stand, that camera perfectly lines up with that slot so that when I've got stuff underneath the tablet stand on the table, I can do, um, I can do optical character recognition. Um, if I had my iPad plugged into a TV screen via HDMI, um, then I could actually also see what was on the screen because this, I mean, I'm standing up here at the moment on my, on my um, standing desk. So I'd have to sort of lower the desk to sort of peer down at the, at the tablet the way it is at the moment. But it actually works quite nicely. And just in case you're wondering, um, that's my iPad with, um, you know, a, a, a single lens. What I tried the other day with, which actually worked, well, actually not the other day, I tried today. This is my new um, iPad Pro, and it's got two lenses. So one below each other one, and that also fits perfectly well. So the, the, this is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now it does sort of, you know, of course it's going to be wider than the stand, but because the bulk of the iPad's actually on the stand, it also works. And the other thing that also works is my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which has got three lenses on it, um, one below each other and one next to it, that also fits in that, it looks can look through that particular slot and that also works really nicely. So if you're after a nice stable tablet stand, because the thing about doing text-to-speech is the camera has to be held steady. So that's why wearables work really well because normally your head's pretty steady. Sometimes people have tremors in their hand or they can't hold the camera steady in their hand. Um, and that's why a, a tablet stand comes in very, very handy. Um, so from that point, you know, so, you know, I've tried my Surface Pro on here. I've tried my Samsung phone, my Samsung tablet. Um, like I just said, my iPad Pro, um, all sorts of different things. Um, even the camera, I shouldn't say even the camera, the Blind Shell Classic 2 camera, it also works with that. I've got to point it slightly a different way because the camera is situated slightly differently, but it all works really nicely. So that's the Belkin one. The other one uh, I wanted to show you is my original favourite stand. <laughs> and this is the Belkin. Oh, this is the Belkin I just talked about. The Belkin. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Yes, just want to make sure people pay attention. Um, this is the Archon stand. So as you can see, you've got a pole here, and then you've got this sort of uh, articulated arm that comes out in one, two, three segments, and these are all adjustable. So you've got these little, you've got these wing nuts on each segment where you can sort of uh, undo them and then readjust them in all different types of orientations. And then at the end of the whole thing, you've got this final attachment here which I always like to re reflect to it as a, it's like a claw or a clamp and that clamps around your, your, your smartphone. So what you can do, and hopefully this will come out on the thing, Tony, but what I can do there, I can loosen this off. Uh -huh. Oops, hang on, take my, I've just put it on top of my mat, on top of my, my keyboard and I can loosen it off and I can change that clamp to face that way. So if I was doing something in, I was, you know, have if this was facing me, I could look at the screen, um, or I can point it down towards the ground, and I can use it as a, you know, again a text to speech system. So when I'm doing my demos for Vision Australia Vision Store, I've got the camera literally pointing at the ground, or if I have to talk, I've got it pointing up. And in actual fact, what I'm talking on at the moment with the um, my other iPhone doing the webinar tonight is another one of these Belkin stands. I just did want to take my phone off the other stand. 
And this, uh, when you extend it, so if I loosen this off on the pole and put it up, um, that goes up probably about another, let's see, from the bottom to the top, I reckon that's a good 90, uh, 75 centimetres, 80 centimetres. It's huge anyway. Um, so it really does go. And the other thing you can get for it, which we don't currently sell, because um, I know when we got the bin, we couldn't find the silly things properly, but you can get a, a an iPad or any smartphone um, attachment which sits on the pole and that holds your tablet. So you can literally have your tablet facing you and then you can also have a smartphone connected as well. So I know my wife, when she's doing her art and craft stuff, she has her iPhone in the little clamp here, which is what she's talking on um, and demonstrating stuff to. And then she's got her iPad on here so that then she can read all the messages that she's getting when she's doing her, her, um, her particular card class on a YouTube live webinar type thing. So it works really nicely. Um, in fact, when you go and look at the Archon stage stand, uh, Archon uh, desktop stand, the USA, it's for creators, card makers, and anyone else who wants to do demonstrations. So for us, being blown low vision, it works really well for, you know, using as a magnifier or as a text-to-speech system. Plus for, you know, YouTubers or demos like, like me that want to do demos of products, also works really well. And it's a really stable, good system. Um, so I highly recommend both the Belkin stage stand for tablets and the um, the Archon stand, particularly for smartphones. So there we go. Well, do we have any questions, Tony? Uh, no, the the audience has been quite uh, quiet this evening. Um, but if you have any questions, um, please use the chat box, or if you click on the raise your hand um, uh, button, then I can unmute you and um, you can ask a question. Ah. Yep. Okay, so we have that's me. Cool. Okay. Um Violetta, I'm just gonna unmute you so you can ask your question. Just have to unmute your microphone. Violetta. Do you want to un unmute your microphone? Hello. <laughs> um, well, I will unmute um, Liana. Um, Liana, Liana. Uh, Liana, um, feel free to ask your question. You just have to unmute your microphone. There we go. There we go. Thanks both. That's fan fantastic um, discussion tonight. But for someone like me, who's mm. zero knowledge when it comes to tech, um, mm. it, it was you know too much information for me to process. So my question is, there mm. are a couple of products that I think I'd be very interested in. Yep. If I come into the Vision Store, uh, can I come into the Vision Store and have someone kind of run through again what you guys said earlier? Um, I, I can answer that, David. Mm. <laughs> um, definitely you can. Um, so if you visit your local Vision Store office, um, the Vision Store staff member will be able to go through uh, the various products that we have gone through today. Um, yeah. We'll be emailing you um, uh, information on all the products that we have discussed today as well, um, uh, tomorrow. Mm. And um, yeah, definitely. Um, for any of the products that you are interested in, our, our Vision Store team can can help you, uh, Liana. Yeah, and also to the the today's webinar will be going out on YouTube if you can access that. Plus, as a like another thing called a podcast, but you can also ring up the Adaptive Technology Help Desk at Vision Australia besides the Vision Store itself. So yeah. if you just ring the main Vision Store number, you know the one three hundred eight four seven four double six number then you can ask questions about you know any of the type of stuff so 
when you get that email and you're curious about, I don't know, the Explore 12 or the Blind Shell Classic or whatever else it might be, yes. then they'll be able to certainly take you through any one of those products with, with no question at all. Oh, great. And with voice recognition, mm. does, does the um, machine, tablet, whatever, for want of a better word, yeah, yeah, um, you're right. do you have to do a kind of voice recognition breaking in so it's well, not... Yeah, so the, we were talking about text to speech. So that's going from that's going from the printed word to speaking out. It's not what you're talking about, which is which wow. is speech to text. So wow. it's not like using blasted, you know, Siri or the A Lady for Alexa, because I, I don't want to say because I've got one here, <laughs> um, or Google. But voice dictation. So for example, on the Blind Shell Classic Two, if I was going to send somebody a, um, a message. So rather than trying to use the old, you know, that's that number pad for doing, you know, um, hello with the number pad, I could just put it in dictation mode and say, hi, it's David. Um, just checking in that you got my email about the training running late. Talk to you later. And it's all, all done via text-to-speech and it's very accurate. And no, you don't have to do any voice training on it because it's just purely voice recognition uh, or speech-to-text. Um, so it's not like, you know, the bad old days of we had like Dragon Dictate in the 90s and 2000s where you had to spend hours training it to recognise your voice. Yeah. Most things these days, so on your iPhone or Android, um, phone or tablet, these things do recognise your voice quite, quite, quite well these days. Right. And last question, because other people obviously want to ask, um, can you get tutorials from you guys or VA or something to bring people like me up to speed with, I know you've got a radio program going, but um, you, can you get mm. it on one? You can, there's a lot of stuff on, on, on the internet. Normally the manuals that come with these things are very straightforward. So for example, with the Blind Shell Classic 2, it's got a really good um, manual on the phone itself or with the explore 12 or the magnifiers the actual manufacturers um, have you know um, actual demos and where we've tried to access stuff on our so our vision shop so shop.visionaustrade.org we're trying to include uh, youtube type demos with all our products now so Okay. Um, as we sort of grab more of them then yes you'll be able to go in and say oh look i'm interested in the I don't know, the Vision Buddy or the Explore 12. And um, we're trying to grab as many videos as we can from the, the from the manufacturer because the worst thing I hate doing is saying to people, oh, yeah, look, it's really easy to use. Just, just go and look it up on the internet. Yes. Whereas if you know you can go to one spot like the shop website and say, okay, so I've heard about the the Archon stage stand or the Archon, sorry, the Archon phone stand. I want to hear or look at a demo of it. And that's exactly what we've got. Thank well, you, David. Thank you, Liana. Thank you very much. <laughs> no that's worries. Okay. My pleasure. Uh, Violetta, I see you've unmuted your microphone. What was your question? Okay. So can you hear me now? Yes, yes. I can. Okay. Hello, um, Tony and David. Um, I really enjoy the, what you're doing at the moment, the presentation. And I'm really very interested in the stand that uh, mm -hmm. David talking about the last um, thing yeah. and uh, and I have any idea how much it costs if I can buy through the NDIS as well? I think it's just over $200 for memory. Um, and yes, you can. Well, I, I put it this way. If you're a self-funded person, yeah. then yes, you can definitely buy it. If you're going through an agency or a planner, that seems to be a lot more complicated these days. And I just realised my microphone moved. Um, it seems to be a lot more complicated these days. But if you're self-funded, yes, you can. Yep. Yeah. Then, uh, then this uh, stand is that I can put my mobile phone and then I can uh, read anything or uh, that I could. That's right. Add. Is that right? That's right. Correct. So you point your so you put the the smartphone in the little um, clamp. Yeah. Point the camera. The point the camera down. 
um, mm. or the, you know the back of the, the the back of the phone down towards the the desk, and so you would have to sort of try and use the touch screen to then. You know, if you're using voiceover, you'd say use maybe the Seeing AI app to go to short text and then, you know, tap it on the screen to make it work. What I've done with mine is I actually, when I've got my phone in a stand like that Mm -hmm. or my tablet, I'm actually using a Bluetooth keyboard because I'm using, you know, voiceover speech. Yeah. I can just completely leave the the phone or the tablet alone on the stand and then I can use my Bluetooth keyboard to say, you know, I can go to my app switcher, I can then activate seeing AI, I can go to short text, and then oh. I can actually use it that way. So what I always say to people, if you're going to start using stuff in a stand, yeah. there's nothing worse than trying to use your touch screen when it's on a stand, mm-hmm. um, particularly when it's in a clamp situation. So you're better off using it with an external device like a Bluetooth keyboard, and then it's yeah. absolutely fantastic. It really almost feels hands-free. Because oh, you know the, the phone's sitting there on the stand, and you're just accessing it via your, your Bluetooth keyboard. Yep. Oh, Works thank really you. nicely. I definitely will visit uh, the shop that I got in Gosford here in Vision Australia. Is that that I can ask information? To Absolutely. Buy? Yep. Yeah. Indeed. It's yeah. Up. So it's called the so it's the Archon Desk, and I think from memory, Tony, it's A R K O N or C O N. Hmm. Thank I'm you. just trying to remember now. But yeah, we, so just ask for the Archon stand and they'll yeah. certainly be able to give you information on it. Cool. Um, well, we've run out of time. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for attending the session. And thank you, Viol- uh, Violetta, for asking the question. Um, please contact the Vision Store team on 1300 847 or email visionstore at visionaustralia.org if you have any further question on what was discussed in this evening's webinar. Uh, we'll be emailing everyone who attended this um, webinar the links to all the products that were discussed. And at the end of the webinar, there will also be a short survey for you to complete and any feedback that you can provide will assist us in improving the content and delivery of our future webinars. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, bye for now. And we will see you in a couple of months' time uh, for Indeed. the next um, Exploring te- te- Technology webinar. Um, so see you, everyone, then. Bye. Great. See you, folks. Vision Australia. Blindness. Low vision. Opportunity. Vision Australia logo. Three navy blue ovals linked together diagonally within a bright yellow rectangle.